Hello, everyone, and welcome to Talk About on Shaw. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we've got an interesting story again today. The guest is Steve Daigle. Uh, I think owner, I guess, is the correct term for Daigle Marine. That's right. Uh, president, too? or President and owner and manager and uh, toilet cleaner. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you've got an interesting story. Uh, they make aluminum boats and they make some of the best aluminum boats in the world, I'm told by somebody who knows what he's talking about in that area. And, uh, but you started young, up in Prince Rupert. How did you get to Prince Rupert and how did you get into boat building? That was interesting because I just told a st uh, story to a gentleman who came down to see me from Kitimat today. Huh. So I was born and raised in Toronto. My father was an avid sport fisherman. He fished uh, all around Canada and uh, I was fortunate enough at the age of 14 to tag along on a fishing trip out in the Douglas Channel on Hawkesbury oh, Island. That's uh, near Kitimat for... That's right, yeah. it's 30 miles out Douglas Channel from Kitimat. Yeah. So I got along quite well with the lodge owner and he invited me back to come and work for him uh, oh. the next summer. So I, I did and then I worked for two more summers and when I graduated high school in Toronto, I, 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 dev I wrote my last exam, I didn't even stay for my graduation. Oh. I loaded up all my worldly possessions in my car and headed out west and, wow. and ended up in uh, Prince Rupert and I went to work for the pulp mill for six months. I quickly realized I didn't want to work in a pulp mill for the rest of my life so I went back to school and took a, a, weld, a one year welding course and came out of that course with my sea level ticket. Was the school in Prince Rupert? No, the school was in Terrace, okay. uh, in Northwest Community College. Yeah. And there was a real demand for welders at the time. Yes. And our whole class had jobs when we graduated. And I went to work for BC Packers in Prince Rupert. And I worked there for a year. And then I went to work for a, a company that did nothing but aluminum work and built a lot of herring skiffs and small aluminum um, push boats. And uh, they call them dead skiffs, uh, what they use in, on saners. Yeah and built a little boat for myself. Uh, the owner of the company was nice enough to let me use his shop on the weekends and um, it took me about six months but I built a little boat and during the time of the construction I would put it outside in front of the, his shop and then at night I would bring it inside and work on it and it created quite a bit of interest to the point where uh, he was getting people interested in, in having me build boats for him. So this was alu them. aluminum? Aluminum And boats. you were doing aluminum welding? And I was, at the time I was doing a lot of herring skiffs. And uh -huh. It was very repetitive, very boring. So I designed this boat for myself and, and I built it and the owner of this company, even though he was nice enough to let me use his shop, um, said he had uh, multiple people that were interested in, in having me design and uh, build a boat for them and I made the decision there that if I was going to do that I'd be doing it on my own. Well, we talked earlier, 20, age, tw age 23 or 24, you had 14 employees? Yes. <laughs> and they, they would have been, obviously, some of them older than you. I was the youngest in the, yeah. in the, out of the 14 employees. Yeah. Now, so you're doing pretty good as a young guy in Prince Rupert. Why did you come to Campbell River? Prince Rupert was, a, was very good to me. Uh, it's really the, the end of the, the world up there. It's... Um, it's a 20-hour drive by car to Vancouver. It's a $900 flight. It's, I felt very isolated and it rains a lot up there. Uh, one thing that Prince Rupert really did give me was the ability to learn how to do multiple different things. We built uh, fish processing equipment. We worked on a lot of commercial fishing boats. We repaired a lot of uh, excavating equipment and, and such, so I had a very broad scope of things and then I actually got a contract with Pacific Northern Gas to do uh, natural gas pipeline work out on Ridley Island and through oh. some of the uh, subdivisions that they were building in Prince Rupert at the time so um, I did that and worked a lot outside and did a, a, a lot of general steel welding, aluminum welding and then one day I just decided that I really liked the aluminum and that uh, I could, or aluminum boat building but there wasn't the market in Prince Rupert yeah. for that. So I uh, made a decision to 
start on, the, on Vancouver Island and, and drive around until I found a place to set up a, a, a shop to build aluminum boats in. And the, I gather if you were first, were you south of Jubilee Parkway or just north of it there? We were uh, just south of Jubilee okay. Parkway, between Jubilee Parkway and Ocean Grove Store. So I moved down there in, uh, from Prince Rupert in 1985. Yeah. But then you had a shop in Willow Point. I worked in a shop behind my house that I built for three years until the regional district uh, pointed out to me that I had grown to the point where I had <laughs> now three employees and perhaps it's time to uh, find a, a proper industrial zoned or uh, huh. commercial zoned uh, piece of property. So I bought uh, a piece of property next to budget uh, car and truck rental. Right. And built a 3,800 square foot shop, which we outgrew in two years and ended up uh, renting half of the, the budget building to do all our rigging in. Yeah, and from there then uh, you moved to the present shop, which is near the Campbell River Bridge. How many square feet there? We have 15,000 square feet uh, on the Island Highway just north of the bridge, and I, I built that building in 2007. Okay. Well, I think uh, we'll take a uh, visit to the shop. Uh, we were there uh, recently, and it gives you an idea of some of the amazing stuff that's going on at Daigle Marine. Prior to moving to Campbell River, I lived in Prince Rupert for 10 years, and I had my own business there, Northwest Welding and Marine, which we did steel work, uh, aluminum work, manufactured boats, repaired equipment, built processing equipment for fish plants and such and I wanted to just build aluminum boats and I was um, in search of a location and, and found Campbell River and that was uh, 34 years ago. Why boats? Well, the Campbell River makes it mainly the boating capital of the world, not only for pleasure boats but also for commercial boats where there's lots of fishing lodges, lots of recreational fishing, there's logging. Uh, we built uh, a couple hundred crew boats in the last 29 years uh, to service the forest industry and aquaculture industry. Uh, a lot of patrol boats, research boats, so there's more marine traffic right in this area than there probably is anywhere else on the coast of BC. Do you like recreational boats more than industrial boats or I guess the money's in the industry? It's, the market changes, you know, from some years we're 70-80% recreational boats and other years uh, right now we're probably 80% uh, commercial vessels. How long does it take the average boat to get built? It really depends on the cost. There's no average boat, is there? There is, there is no average boat. The Port Metro boats, for instance, is, it's a 10-month project. Uh, are they almost done then? I, they're looking... Well, they're actually, all the aluminum work is almost all completed now, but now we have to do all the interiors, we have to do all the mechanical, electrical systems, we have to put the engines in them. So we, we're, uh, we're right on time for having them put in service for May of this year. Sounds like the boys are back from coffee, too. It does, and that's always a good sound. I get worried when it's too quiet out here. Okay, well, um, it would be nice if business goes up and up and up and up, but we know it goes in waves. And you had some uh, tough times. You had to lay staff off. In, what was it, 2008? Yeah, well, it started in 2008. Uh, we were actually building 70% of our boats for the U.S. market and we were uh, selling most of them down to the San Juan, Seattle area. Uh, a lot of them are, were cruisers or uh, pleasure boats, quite high-end boats. And when the economy turned in the end of 2008, that door got closed. And, yeah. and it really has never opened up. So yeah. we've gone into building more commercial vessels now and uh, doing more repair work. Yeah. Well, you came to, well, I, I'd obviously heard of Daigle Marine, but you made news recently with a, a big order from Port Metro Vancouver, the headline here, a $2 million deal for two boats. Yeah, that was pretty exciting. Yeah. <laughs> um, tell us a little bit about those, uh, in not just what they do, uh, but uh, where they fit in the evolution of the company. We have... Uh, built boats for other port authorities. We recently, in the last four years, have built two boats for the Nanaimo Port Authority mm -hmm. 
and that was kind of our foot into the door um, for the ports. We've also built quite a few patrol boats for uh, Vancouver City Police. Their, their main patrol boat is an Eagle mm. Craft, and I've actually built two patrol boats for them. And parks and fisheries um, all have our, our patrol boats. So the patrol boat uh, market, uh, there's uh, the federal government, as we know, have, has lots of money to spend. So we've been getting our fair share of federal contracts. And the uh, Port Metro Vancouver is, 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 is another one. And it went out for uh, competitive um, bids. And we had to come up with a design that we had to uh, prove to them that we were capable of building the vessels and what performance they could expect. Um, the port of Nanaimo was kind enough to let us uh, have those boats available to take all the people from the port Metro Vancouver out, so they could yeah. see what those boats, how those boats them. performed, and I think that was really uh, a huge advantage for the, yeah. the for that build was to be able to get yeah. new customers on existing boats, so they can yeah. see how they perform and yeah. and drive them and and maneuver around ships in yeah. tight areas. Yeah. Now, uh, you won the contract on merit, it's obvious. For a contract like that, you don't get it. But you do have a friend, uh, Peter Zada, who's the Senior Vice President in Operations for Port Metro Vancouver. Grew up here in town. It's, it's, it's <laughs> funny, he's a, local, he's a local boy and one of my, uh, my tradesmen, Norm, who's worked for me for 28 years, I went to school with Peter. Huh. and then. Uh, we started talking about other friends, uh, the, uh, Terry Stewart, Steve Kunal from Apple Electric, and I've run into people all the time that uh, that know Peter and know his brother and his parents, and I guess his brother still mm. live here in Campbell River, and he comes up quite regularly. Yeah. Um, I heard through the grapevine that you sold a boat to Bill Gates. Is that true? No, it actually wasn't Bill, Bill Gates. I've sold several uh, boats to a uh, very close friend of, ah. of Bill Gates, uh, Craig McCaw, who oh. owned uh, Cellular One. Yes, okay. And James Island. Well, check your facts, John. <laughs> <laughs> um, is, are the Port Metro uh, boats the biggest you've done? Or uh, when we were in the shop, it looked like there were others that were bigger. but maybe not as powerful or something? They're unique from any other boat that we, we've built previously. Our patrol boats have been in the 36 foot range has been the largest patrol boats. So these being 43s are, are um, an exciting build because they're, they're larger and it's, uh, they're not a very complicated boat. They're, um, they, don't, they don't have overnight accommodations or or galleys and kitchens to cook food in. Um, they're twin D9 500 horse uh, Volvo engines with a 16 kilowatt generator and a pretty advanced electrical system with FLIR night vision cameras and state-of-the-art uh, side scan sonar systems and underwater lights. Oh really? I didn't know that. Um, earlier when we were talking I was uh, fascinated by the electric aspects of it, like electricity and salt water, I gather, is a bit of a problem. But uh, you manage that with special metallurgy? Is that the there way to say it? We put cathodic anodes on the, on the boat, zinc anodes or aluminum anodes, depending on what application, and those are consumed by the electrical current in the salt water before the parent metal, the aluminum, oh. is consumed. And you, you see that with every, every okay. steel boat or yeah, fiberglass boats have them because they have through hull penetrations okay. and they have outboard motors and stern drives. They all have to be protected with uh, cathodic protection. Okay, so that's not really uh, a Daigle specialty. It's industry standard? It's, a, it's industry. But yeah, okay. It's, it's interesting um, knowing a little bit ab about that and we have a cathodic meter that we check each boat before it goes delivered to the customer making sure that we have adequate protection on it. Well, wow, time is flying. <laughs> um, the name Eaglecraft, uh, you chose that? My father did. Okay, and why? My father has a French background, and our name is Daigle, and uh -huh. in French, Daigle is Eagle. Uh -huh. So he, he thought that that would be an appropriate name for our boats. And it's well, a, Eagle's a very good BC name. It, it is. There's yeah. a, a few of them around here. <laughs> 
Um, also earlier we were talking about uh, you have an in-house architect. Uh, that, I, you know, I'm, I'm not in the industry, that sounds like a luxury, but uh, I gather, is it close to a necessity or just a big advantage? It is a necessity with a, a business our size. We have to do drawings that have to be submitted to Transport Canada. We have to do stability tests on, on our boats. And it's, it's very nice to be able to build a boat from an accurate drawing, computer-generated drawing, and yeah. be able to build a boat on paper before you actually build it yeah. on, the, on the shop floor. It's nice to be able to do Have it. you had the same naval architect for a long time, or do you they come He's, and go? Flippe has been with me, f I think, for five years. And before that, I had another naval architect for six years. And then yeah. before that, um, we were just using draftsmen. Yeah. Um, now, you do a lot of the work on site, but I also know from the previous visit that you have to, or you choose to, send some stuff out like to Asia. What, what's the story there? Send some stuff uh, out Some metal, or you buy metal? Oh, and, okay. Uh, Our what, aluminum the? is actually, it used to all be made in, in North America. Alcoa and Alcan had rolling mills and extruding mills, and now most of the aluminum comes in from China or mm -hmm. um, Thailand. Have, there's some big aluminum plants there. Korea is another big supplier of aluminum. So most of our aluminum that we're using in our boats comes from overseas. So Kitimat makes aluminum, big plant there. But do they ship the ingots to Asia and then it comes back to us? That's right. Wow. So I've been to the rolling mills in Asia and they, they just take those ingots that they fill the huh. ships up with and alloy them to the various different uh, yeah. alloys of, uh, of metals. But we're, yeah. We probably use seven different alloys of aluminum in the construction of a boat. Huh, interesting. Um, do the workers call you Steve or do they call you Mr. Daigle? It's Steve, and yeah. sometimes if they're mad at me, they'll call me other things. <laughs> well, uh, the, you know, time is uh, flying by, but I, I, what's it like being uh, an entrepreneur of a pretty good mid-sized business but uh, um, you know I mean you started young and, and small and now you know you're getting pretty big is it a do you do you have to focus on finances and politics more than you like or have you got guys that help you in that or? I have some really good staff that uh, work with me on different projects. I have a, a junior partner in the business, uh, Bob Chris Masson. He's our administrator. He takes care of all of the, the, the paperwork and the leases and the taxes and, yeah. and stuff. And then we have a, a very good local accountant that we work quite closely with. Yeah. And then we have a, a gal that uh, pays all the bills and works with me on the various different projects as far as quotations and proposals and yeah. invoices and stuff. Okay. Um, what do you think about the local business climate, and not just Campbell River, but say like Vancouver Island and BC? And are you optimistic about the economy, or are you being careful? Or I'm very optimistic about our local economy. Uh, I think Campbell River is going through a really interesting period right now with all the construction projects, and I think one of the biggest projects um, that. Uh, we all hope happens, and, and from what I understand, it's a, it's a very good chance that will, and that's the Discovery LNG plant. That, that's in the neighborhood of 12 to 16 billion dollars. My note said 8 to 12, and I, <laughs> I it, what were those numbers? 12 I was, to 16? I, I used to say between 8 and 12, but I was yeah. talking to a, a, a friend of mine on the weekend who delivered one of my boats back to me, who's doing all the the geotechnical work yeah. on the, on a proposed LNG site for Prince Rupert, and he says they're they're uh, they're 12 to 16 billion now. Whew. By the time you put in all the infrastructure, so that, that would be huge for Campbell River. Yeah. Now, uh, do you do industrial prefab or are you strictly ocean oriented? We're strictly aluminum boats. Yeah. But uh, I guess Discovery LNG, if they get going, they would need some uh, some boats. They do because those um, LNG tankers have to have escort vessels with them, and each uh, each tanker has two escort vessels. And we've already um, put a design in and submitted it to the, the port authority that will be in charge huh. of that project. And we don't even know how they're going to get the gas here. 
uh, I've heard various different things is that they'd be bringing the gas up from uh, Port Angeles and that we already have the infrastructure pipe on the island it's just now we're getting the gas to the South Island. Is the, the gas, the line on the island is big enough? Apparently. Well, well we've got a, a cogen so I guess so. Um, one of the questions I like to ask guests is uh, a wish list. Is there something I didn't ask that you want to pass along or you know, an observation? Well, I would just like to, to say that uh, I've probably got the best staff right now that I've ever had in having my own business for 34 years. I've got a bunch of young guys um, that are very committed to their work, that are extremely good tradesmen, that are really easy to get along with, that um, uh, give me all they've got and uh, come up with some creative new ideas to do things. And so it's a very positive um, working with uh, with the crew that I have right now. Yeah, what kind of advice would you give people that are maybe starting out in business? Well, that's a that's a very good question. Um, I think you really have to do your homework. I think you really have to do the, a, a realistic business plan and make sure that you have adequate financing to uh, to pull it through. I know a lot of business they, they start and then they, they struggle and they, they just don't have the capital to yeah. uh, work with and, and banks are are not uh, always the easiest places to go and get capital out of. Yeah. What did you do? Um, I approached uh, the uh, Royal Bank when I was 24 years old and I had all my equipment paid for so I needed an operating capital huh. and uh, the Royal Bank was there for me uh, 34 years ago, and there we still are dealing with the Royal Bank today. Well, wow. huh. um, do you ever think about going public? You know, issuing shares? No. No. Why not? I, I don't think the, the size of our business would justify that. Yeah. Well, do you see the business here growing bigger and bigger and bigger, or is it? maybe just going to hit a level where, okay, this is good, the space is good, just stay there. I'm content with uh, the size of the business now and, and just do the best work that we can with the facility yeah. that we have. I have no uh, wishes to expand or hire more employees than what we have right now. It seemed pretty full though uh, we're, when we were there. We're running at capacity. Yeah. What's your staffing now? We have 24 employees. But yeah, we're, I think you were up at 34 or 38 or something at one point? We were at, at 34 okay. in 2007, 2008. And then the uh, economy uh, got hit and uh, we were actually down to 17, 18 for a while. Yeah. And uh, things have come back and hopefully we'll, we'll stay here. Yeah. What about young people looking to get on uh, with you? Uh, are their local trades training adequately or do they have to go to Vancouver? We have uh, our North Island College or Vancouver Island University that uh, put on a, a welding course. There's um, about to be some changes I believe in, the, in that welding is going to become a trade and that there will be now an apprenticeship um, in the near future which I think will be a very good move. Um, the, there's also uh, Vancouver Island College has been talking to us about putting an aluminum boat building course on and I've been working with uh, with Bruce Cope who's a designer oh. who has built aluminum boats on that so that would be good. It's a matter of um, getting somebody in that, that has a little bit of experience because there, there's no subsidies from the government to take yeah. somebody on and, and, and train them so where we can we, we hire people with experience. Now I know from talking to you earlier, when you make a mistake, uh, say in a boat design, uh, there's no insurance, but uh, if a person working on a big piece of aluminum makes a mistake, how much does that cost? Mistakes happen. Yeah. And the main thing is that you learn from your mistakes and don't repeat them. And yeah. you, know, you might lose some money on, on one job and then make up for it on another. How vulnerable are you to exchange rate shifts and uh, aluminum prices? Well, the uh, aluminum is a, is a commodity. It's on the commodity market and all our suppliers have you know, warned us that with uh, our dollar going down in value against the U.S. and other 
uh, currencies that we can expect uh, some price increases on our aluminum. Yeah. Do you hedge currencies at all? No, we don't because the, the aluminum is actually such a small part of, of, of building a, a boat. If we're building oh, okay. a, um, those Port Metro Vancouver boats, there's uh, 12,000 pounds of aluminum yeah. in, those, in those boats at uh, $2.50 a pound. Okay. Uh, so would you say you're a labor intensive business? It's very much, uh, labor yeah. is definitely the, the highest cost that we have. Yeah. Um, in the economy, labor is about, I think, 66% or two thirds roughly of everything, but it varies a lot. It, would you be up to, to say 80%? No, the machinery, the engines, diesel uh, engines are very expensive. All the electronics that go into a boat, I would say we're probably two thirds yeah. labor. Yeah. And we, and we have to pay our tradesmen quite well, otherwise they'll be going down to get on the plane at Comox and flying to, to uh, Fort McMurray <laughs> to, yes. to uh, make big money. So we have to pay competitive wages. Yeah. Uh, one of the facts that you told me earlier, I, I, uh, I thought it was when we had the tour, uh, you're Volvo's largest OEM customer in Canada, original equipment manufacturer. Uh, I mean, little old Campbell River, big Volvo, huge engines. These are the diesel engines. There's other uh, okay. manufacturers at yeah. Campion and people who build production line fiberglass boats that will, will buy more product, but they're mainly gasoline engines. So yeah. we're actually quite, uh, quite fortunate. Volvo likes this area because of the, of the amount of hours that get used on their products and water taxis and crew boat applications. So there's more of their product in, in, this, in this area. And so we're not only the largest OEM, account that they have for product for building boats. We also have the Volvo Penta's largest diesel dealer here in, in Campbell River Advanced Marine Power. Huh. So Volvo, um, we've been over to Sweden a couple of times and, and everybody that works for Volvo Penta knows about Campbell River with the yeah. amount of product that they have yeah. here. Now uh, the Port Metro project is uh, one type of boat but I know from looking there that you've also got uh, sort of ferries for resorts, and you've got fishing and logging. Uh, do you see that continuing as a mix of markets, or is there going to be maybe a focus? Um, logging seems to be coming back. We're doing more than we've done with the logging industry in the last year than we've done in the last seven or eight years. There's, um, uh, there's going to be some more expansion in the aquaculture industry, which all the employees who work on these fish farms have to go to work in a boat. So yes. we'll be there to either build boats for them or lease boats for them. Uh, also, the, there's other projects. Uh, there's another run of the river project in Toba Inlet, and there's going to be crew transportation yeah. down there. So passenger vessel transportation, landing crafts, uh, research boats, um, government agencies using boats. It's, it's, it's very diverse. Yeah. Do you get any spin-offs from the natural gas pipeline uh, or, or oil pipelines? We hope to if we get some spin-offs for the oil pipeline when it comes out into Kitimat. It's going to be a water accessible site only. Right now in Kitimat they're building two liquid natural gas plants and th those plants are water access only, so we have a uh, oh. lease business and we have three boats okay. currently up there and that uh, taking crews into the LNG sites right well. now. Well, Steve, thank you very much for coming in. It's <laughs> I think we could talk a lot more about the pretty fascinating industry. But uh, thank you all for watching Talk About, and uh, we look forward to seeing you here again. Thank you to the volunteers. Thank you, Chaz and Shaw, for producing the shows and uh, tell your friends about Talk About. Good night.